Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, Aid stole documents from his desk in the name of national security. His Secretary of State described him as an expletive deleted moron. His Chief of Staff calls working in the White House crazy town, adding, This is the worst job I've ever had. Just some of the explosive claims about President Trump in the new book by veteran journalist Bob Woodward, a devastating account of the Oval Office through the eyes of Trump's own inner circle. Well, live now to our Washington correspondent, Kylie Morris. Kylie, is there anything here that we haven't read or heard before? I think there are degrees of detail here, Matt, certainly, that we were unaware of. For example, as you mentioned, the idea that an economic advisor who wants to get rid of the notion that President Trump might want to end a trade deal simply make sure that the policy underlining or describing how that might be done should, should just disappear off his desk and make sure that he's not aware that it's gone. You know, the idea that General Mattis, so the Defence Secretary, in a meeting with President Trump, President Trump asks, why are we spending so much money you know, trying to secure the Korean Peninsula? And the Defence Secretary tells him that it's in order to to make sure that there's no World War III and then walks out of the meeting apparently telling someone else that he has the intelligence of a fifth or sixth grader in terms of his understanding. Here's a taste of what we know so far, including audio of a phone interview between President Trump and the author. We look forward to, uh, if it's possible, an even better job as Chief of Staff. That job as Donald Trump's chief of staff is apparently the worst one General Kelly has ever had. He's quoted in the forthcoming book by Bob Woodward as describing the president thus. He's an idiot. It's pointless to try to convince him of anything. He's gone off the rails. We're in crazy town. I don't even know why any of us are here. This is the worst job I've ever had. Uh, the enthusiasm level is incredible. And it's not just his chief of staff, but nearly all the president's men who harbor deep concerns about their leader, according to the book, which Woodward says is drawn from in-depth interviews with administration officials and witnesses, all conducted on deep background. It offers a fresh insight into the president's state of mind after the neo-Nazi rally and murder of protester Heather Heyer in Charlottesville when Donald Trump declared... I think there's blame on both sides, and I have no doubt about it, and you don't have any doubt about it either. Gary Cohen, his former chief economic advisor, seen here standing to the far left of picture, delivered his resignation directly after. President Trump rejected it, saying this is treason. Kelly reportedly told Cohen he would have taken that resignation letter and shoved it six different times. Well, somewhere you can't say on TV, Thank on the you. president's Thank person. All the president's men. The journalist and author Bob Woodward has a history of skewering presidents. The film All the President's Men is a dramatic retelling of he and his colleague Carl Bernstein's investigation of Watergate, the scandal which ultimately led Richard Nixon to resign his presidency. This whole thing is a cover-up. It's right on our nose. If the Mueller inquiry is Donald Trump's Watergate, then here is a new insight, too, into the legal peril faced by the president. Woodward's book recounts a conversation between former lawyer John Dowd and President Trump regarding whether or not the president should speak directly to Mueller, ultimately advising, don't testify, it's either that or an orange jumpsuit. Much depends upon Donald Trump's attorney general when it comes to potential fallout for the president from the Mueller investigation. The president has fiercely criticized his attorney general in public, but in private, he reportedly called Jeff Sessions a traitor, adding in the most offensive of terms, this guy is mentally retarded. He's this dumb southerner. He couldn't even be a one-person country lawyer down in Alabama. It's not all just personal slights and tantrums. There's geopolitics here as well. Last April, the U.S. fired cruise missiles toward a Syrian airbase after Bashir al-Assad used chemical weapons against civilians. But according to Woodward's interviews, the president's first response was to telephone his defense secretary, James Mattis, and tell him he wanted to assassinate the Syrian leader. Let's kill him. Let's go in. Let's kill the lot of them. Mattis told the president he'd get right on it, hung up, and reportedly told an aide, we're not going to do any of that. We're going to be much more measured.
further elevate the drama, there's now audio of a telephone conversation between the president and Bob Woodward. Woodward explains to him. You know, it's a tough look at the world and your administration and you. Right. Well, I assume that means it's going to be a negative book, but, well, you know, I'm, some, I'm sort of 50 percent used to that. That's all right. Some are good and some are bad. Sounds like this is going to be a bad one. And there, President Trump is right. It does sound like it's going to be a bad one. Interestingly, we haven't heard anything directly from the White House since the first lines from this book have emerged, so three hours or so. Uh, but perhaps it does explain somewhat to the extent to which the president has been railing at his rallies recently about unsourced journalism and the idea that people are writing things about him, quoting unnamed sources and never actually uh, declaring who they've been speaking to. Perhaps that was an attempt to uh, get at this Woodward book before it actually came out. But there is no sense that at this point, at least, uh, it feels a very damaging release potentially for the president. And now the question is, how exactly will the White House respond? Kylie Morris in Washington. Now, boring, untrue, a work of fiction, nothing more than falsehoods from disgruntled former employees. That's what the White House says about veteran journalist Bob Woodward's latest book, attempting to scotch the reporter's depiction of a dysfunctional and even dangerous president. From Washington, Danny Isdale reports. We know he's an early riser, and when the White House wakes up, the president's Twitter feed would suggest his morning routine begins with the remote control in one hand Good morning, breaking overnight. and smartphone in the other. Now a new insight into how his staff have referred to that ritual is the witching hour and Donald Trump's bedroom, the devil's workshop. That's what his former chief of staff writes Priebus is quoted as saying in Bob Woodward's new book, feverish discussions of which were surely the first thing the president saw when he switched on his television this morning. It's full of anonymous quotes uh, from disgruntled former employees. Right, so as predicted, just as Sarah Sanders is doing her Fox TV interview, the president has tweeted, isn't it a shame that someone can write an article or book, totally make up stories and form a picture of a person that's literally the opposite of fact and get away with it without retribution or cost? And this is new. Don't know why Washington politicians don't change libel laws. So as soon as she came off air, she walked right into questions about what he meant by that. Does the book amount to label? Uh, I don't know. I think we have to see uh, the rest of the book. We've seen a few excerpts uh, that have been pretty widely pushed back on by uh, some of the most respected people in our country. Sarah, 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 what is your personal opinion of Bob Woodward? Uh, look, I don't know Bob Woodward. I haven't met him. I haven't talked you to him. You know his work. Um, you know his history. I haven't read a lot of his books, actually. and I. Um, think so far. I'm, I am into fiction like General Mattis, so maybe I'll take a look at this. Do you really think he... But Bob Woodward doesn't really deal in fiction. He's written books on every president since Nixon. His reporting led to Watergate. I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow. In fear, Trump in the White House, anonymous sources offer jaw-dropping anecdotes. Aides stole or hid documents from Trump's desk to protect the country. Defence Secretary Jim Mattis ignored the president's request to kill Bashar al-Assad. Lawyer John Dowd warned Trump he'd be wearing an orange jumpsuit if he dared testify to Mueller. The president called his Attorney General Jeff Sessions mentally retarded and his own chief of staff called him an idiot who had gone off the rails. And there's more where that came from, 448 pages worth. Hello, Bob. President Trump, how are you? Bob Woodward did seek an interview with Donald Trump and later recorded this exchange about it. Nobody mentioned it. Nobody told me about it. Well, let me ask her, why don't you speak to Kellyanne? Ask her. She never told me about it. Hey Bob, how are you? Hi. I, uh, remember two and a half months ago you came over and I laid out, I wanted to talk to the president, mm -hmm. and you said you would uh, get back to me? I do, and I put in the request, but, you know, they, it, it was rejected. I can only take it so far. I guess I can bring it right to the president next time. She should have come to me. Uh, she does have access to me, absolutely. She has direct access, but she didn't come to me. And you know what? That's okay. I'll just end up with another bad book. What can I tell you? She said we're not afraid to take the president request. Uh, it's why the president regularly engages with the media and is probably the most accessible president that we've ever does seen. Does he work Thanks, guys. Doing an The book's main characters are pushing back, too. 
Donald Trump's ex-lawyer was quick to respond. John Dowd denies ever calling the president a liar or saying he'd be likely to end up in prison if he testified to the special counsel. But he doesn't work here anymore. He resigned in March. So what of those who still serve at the pleasure? Well, James Mattis calls it a work of fiction, the product of someone's rich imagination. As for General John Kelly, well, he denies the very idea that he'd ever call the president an idiot, saying it's total BS, a pathetic attempt to smear those who work in the White House. It's by no means the first report or even book that paints a picture of a presidency in chaos, of staffers frightened not just for themselves but for the country too. But the difference now? This was written by a man known as the preeminent chronicler of the White House for four decades. Bob Woodward stands by his reporting and Carl Bernstein once again stands by him. There is not an element of this that the President of the United States can call fake news or fake book. This is the real story of Donald Trump naked. President Trump has launched a scathing attack on the New York Times after it published an anonymous article apparently written by one of his senior officials describing how staff are secretly ignoring Donald Trump's orders. The official says members of the administration are trying to counter the president's recklessness and protect the country from his worst inclinations. The president said he doubted whether the person really existed and called the paper phony and failing. Our North America correspondent Nick Bryant reports. This American stately home is now the scene of a dramatic Washington whodunit, a search for the identity of the senior Trump administration official who says they're part of the resistance to his presidency. The anonymous editorial says that although they want his administration to succeed, many within are working diligently to frustrate parts of his agenda. It suggests his presidency is defined by Trump's amorality, that he's impetuous, adversarial, petty, ineffective, an anti-democratic. God bless you and thank you, Mr. Amen. President. The article struck Washington like a lightning bolt and shortly afterwards, at a meeting with American sheriffs, the president delivered his unsmiling response. If the failing New York Times has an anonymous editorial, can you believe it? Anonymous, meaning gutless, a gutless editorial. Uh, we're doing a great job. The poll numbers are through the roof. Our poll numbers are great. And guess what? Nobody is going to come close to beating me in 2020. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. The White House issued a statement calling for the coward who wrote the article to resign. The president demanded that the New York Times turn him or her over to the government for national security purposes. There was also this one-word tweet written in capital letters asking treason. But the author claimed to be putting America first, raising concerns about Donald Trump's preference for dictators and autocrats like Kim Jong-un and Vladimir Putin, and alleging he was reluctant to punish Russia after the Salisbury poisonings. America's top diplomat is incensed. It shouldn't surprise anyone that the New York Times, a uh, liberal newspaper that has attacked this administration relentlessly, chose to print such a piece. The article reinforces the central narrative in this explosive new book from Bob Woodward that administration officials are trying to protect the American people from the American president. So the mood in Washington is feverish, with cabinet officials such as the vice president and defense secretary rushing to issue denials that they wrote the piece. For critics of the president, this article offers proof of a White House in chaos. For his supporters, it backs up his fervent claim that the political establishment and liberal media is out to get him, that what he calls the deep state is trying to subvert his presidency. Nick Bryant, BBC News, Washington. President Trump has described the author of a damning article on the inner workings of the White House as gutless. The anonymous opinion piece in the New York Times says officials are actively resisting the president's commands to curb his worst impulses. The article is said to have been penned by a senior member of the Trump administration. Now the hunt is very much on for the enemy within, as our Washington correspondent Robert Moore reports. Mr. President, New York Times op-ed. The President is clearly seething over the revelation that there exists deep within the administration at least one official seeking to subvert his agenda. He described the writer of the anonymous article as gutless and attacked the New York Times for publishing it. So when you tell me about some anonymous source within the administration, probably who's failing 
and probably here for all the wrong reasons. No. And the New York Times is failing. If I weren't here, I believe the New York Times probably wouldn't even exist. And, and someday... Then the president went further and, with a one-word tweet, suggested the official had committed the greatest crime of all. The anonymous official is claiming there is a patriotic resistance within the White House, writing, Many of the senior officials in his own administration are working diligently from within to frustrate parts of his agenda and his worst inclinations. It has created a new political and media storm around the White House. The finger-pointing, paranoia and suspicion erupting at the White House. The president's reaction reportedly volcanic. In Washington, there is now a frenzied guessing game underway. Who exactly was the author? Many of the administration's key players are denying they wrote the article or that they're part of any secret resistance. The Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, said it wasn't him. Uh, it, it is sad that you have... Uh someone who would make that choice. Uh, I, I come from a place where if, if you're not in a position to execute the commander's intent, you have a singular option, and it's to leave. Democrats and Republicans alike are now joining the speculation. It probably won't take long for us to find out who wrote it, who has denied it already, the vice president. That was my first thought. <laughs> uh, it's a person who obviously is living um, in dishonesty, that doesn't help the president, so if you're not interested in helping the president, you shouldn't work for the president, as far as I'm concerned. All of this will fuel a sense of paranoia, but Trump is also arguing it validates his view that there is a conspiracy to undermine his presidency. Robert Moore, ITV News, Washington. Now, in Washington, a frenetic guessing game is underway to unearth the identity of the author of a New York Times opinion piece who claims to be part of a resistance inside the White House. The anonymous official wrote about efforts to constrain the president's amorality and impulsiveness. In response, Donald Trump has called the writer gutless and demanded the newspaper, quote, turn him or her over to government at once. From the US, our Washington correspondent Kylie Morris is there now live. Kylie. Yes, Kathy, perhaps you can see the steam emerging from the White House at the moment. Reportedly, Donald Trump's response to all of this has been volcanic, nothing less. He's a man who often claims to be the victim of a witch hunt. It seems he's now presiding over one while he looks for the person who has written this op-ed. Of course, there is also considerable anger being directed by the White House at the New York Times for choosing to break with its tradition and to actually publish this editorial anonymously. Uh, I think the real difficulty for the White House is this comes so close on the heels of the lines that emerged from this Bob Woodward book, all done on deep background um, over the past few days. It too paints a picture of a chaotic White House with a capricious president, a White House where staff have to intervene to protect the American people from his more dangerous impulses. But what about the politics in all this? I think the really interesting question is how, this, how the response to this works out a little way down the line. Donald Trump is sending messages out to his voters saying, look, he is trying to drain the swamp and the swamp is fighting back. If the first rule of the resistance is don't talk about the resistance, someone just broke the code in dramatic fashion. The root of the problem is the president's amorality. Anyone who works with him knows he is not moored to any discernible first principles that guide his decision making. In the opinion pages of the New York Times, a current senior official in the administration writes an editorial that lifts the lid on what he or she describes as the amoral, chaotic presidency of Donald Trump. The dilemma, which he does not fully grasp, is that many of the senior officials in his own administration are working diligently from within to frustrate parts of his agenda and his worst inclinations. I would know. I am one of them. Line by line, the anonymous official delivers an ever more devastating assessment of the White House which they serve, one of the adults in the room, to curb the president's more dangerous tendencies. It may be cold comfort in this chaotic era, but Americans should know that there are adults in the room. We fully recognize what is happening, and we are trying to do what's right, even when Donald Trump won't. The result is a two-track presidency. It didn't take long for the president to react, flanked by a posse of sheriffs in the East Room, 
he was determined to correct the record, producing his own newspaper article from a suburban Washington conservative newspaper that sings his praises. So we have more people working today than at any point ever in our history. Then he ran through his talking points one by one in a tone both angry and bitter. If the failing New York Times has an anonymous editorial, can you believe it? Anonymous, meaning gutless, a gutless editorial. Uh, we're doing a great job. The poll numbers are through the roof. Our poll numbers are great. And guess what? Nobody is going to come close to beating me in 2020. Shortly after, he tweeted, does the so-called senior administration official really exist or is it just the failing New York Times with another phony source? If the gutless anonymous person does indeed exist, the Times must, for national security purposes, turn him or her over to government at once. And apparently yesterday there were a bunch of texts going around the White House that said, sleeper cells have woken. On anonymous, networks right and left, there began a frenetic round Supposedly of who wrote it Trump as anchors played guess the author was it John Kelly chief of staff who denied calling his boss an idiot after he was quoted in the Bob Woodward book fear Dan Coates says it wasn't him even though the director of national intelligence in July seemed bemused by the president's behavior okay yeah <laughs> Regardless of who wrote it, the op-ed confirms for power brokers in this town what they already knew. I just don't see any news being created uh, by this op-ed. I think it's an awareness that all of us who are in responsible positions have had. And uh, so uh, another day in, in the life of Washington. So why take the risk? Was whoever wrote it trying to cleanse themselves of their own role in the White House or to act as a lodestar for a rebellion by everyday Americans? There is a quiet resistance within the administration of people choosing to put country first. But the real difference will be made by everyday citizens rising above politics, reaching across the aisle and resolving to shed the labels in favour of a single one, Americans. The reality is everyday Americans who voted for Donald Trump now have confirmation that the deep state of which he warned is real, that the establishment is the resistance, and that in the end they must fight and they will prevail. Kylie Morris in Washington. Well, I'm joined now from Washington, D.C. by the intelligence analyst Sebastian Gorka, a former advisor to the Trump administration in 2017. It's all rather chaotic, isn't it, Mr. Gorka? No, why would it be chaotic? You don't even know if the person who wrote this op-ed exists. You don't believe they exist? Given the track record of the New York Times' coverage of this administration and the number of times they've been caught peddling fake news, my first reaction is that this was driven by somebody's febrile fever dreams of radical leftism and made up by somebody in the New York Times newsroom. If it is, in fact, written by somebody in the government, it is clearly not a senior White House official. There is nothing in this document that smacks of anybody. I mean, the, the, the idea that they're actually asking cabinet officials is risible. It is beyond a joke. If this is somebody who works in the administration, it is a very, very low-level Obama holdover. But it's not the only time we've had these kind of allegations about what's going on in the Trump presidency. I mean, we've just had the Bob Woodward book making very similar allegations about uh, people restraining the president from his own worst impulses. Yeah, and what was the reaction from people who aren't cowards to the Bob Woodward book? You have four-star generals, four-star generals, such as Secretary Mattis, and other members of the administration said they never, ever said the things that Bob Woodward imputed to them. He is a liar. He is a hack. Bob Woodward, when I was in the White Bob Woodward had zero access. This is a book written by an administration, by a person who has less access to the White House than the average U.S. citizen. Okay, so but he's also... The idea that Bob Woodward is to be substantiating this op-ed that is, again, anonymous we don't take okay. it seriously okay he's also Bob Woodward is also an incredibly respected journalist and has been for many years but this op-ed no, that you're talking about it's interesting isn't like it me. just let me pick up on one not point that you've made like me. the op-ed that you've been talking about it's interesting that Donald Trump hasn't chosen to cast doubt on the author's existence as you just have he's just he's called it treasonous hasn't he 
Well, no, so have I. I've actually called it seditious. So I said that there's two possible scenarios if you analyze this in the, the cold light of day. Number one, it's fictitious, it's fallacious, it's, it's, it's just a fantasy of the New York Times, which is possible. Or number two, it is written by a real person in the administration, but in my opinion, a low-level holdover, a leftover of the Obama administration. And if that is the case, that individual took an oath of office, as I did when I came into the White House, and they have committed sedition. You can look it up right now in the Oxford di Dictionary. Sedition is the overt or covert attempt to undermine a legal, lawful authority or a constitutional order. This actually, letter, the person admits, I am a member of the resistance undermining the president. That is sedition. Okay, but he's saying he's putting his loyalty first to the country. And I have looked up seditious conspiracy. Uh, uh, and the legal the, terms of... Hang on, let me just finish. I have, I have looked at the terms of the seditious conspiracy. And it's conspiring to overthrow the government. This person is actually saying that he's in, he or she is in support of the government. Yeah, by, by undermining the president. I mean, this is why the letter reeks of being absolute garbage. It's rubbish. The idea that in one sentence you say, oh, I support this president, and you write his party. His party? What do you mean his party? Either you support his agenda or you don't. And then, then the author says, I'm a member of the resistance. Sorry? You can't, you can't work. If you worked in 10 Downing Street, and actually admitted that you are there to undermine Theresa May, you'd be committing sedition too. You don't so have that what? option. You, you weren't, this person was not elected to be president. They have no authority to undermine a duly elected head of state. Okay, that's so what, why it's sedition. That's Whatever the case, they what, say it is, it's sedition. What should be the repercussions then? I mean, should anyone resisting or restraining the I'll president in this way be sacked? Because there's quite a long list of people, therefore, in the firing line. Instantly. I mean, I'll tell you what the repercussions will be. The four-star Marine Corps legend, General Kelly, who is the chief of staff, who runs the White House in terms of everyday function, will root out this seditious individual, and he will be, or she, will be immediately, very publicly and humiliatingly fired by the president to whom he should or she should have had their policy loyalty. That is exactly what's going to happen in the next few days. Do you think Trump should bring back the old loyalists? I mean, people like you and Steve Bannon? I've, I've talked to the president uh, since I left office. Uh, when did you last speak to him? It's up to him to you know, do that if he, if he so wishes. You know, Steve Bannon has started his own conservative movement in Europe. He has a film coming out in uh, two days' time here in the U.S., the, the uh, war Trump. Uh, I'm very, very happy supporting the president from the outside of the building. He is, too. He's told me so. So when, when it's up to the president, to his prerogative. It was up... Sorry? When did you last speak to him? Sorry? When did you last speak to the president? Uh, when I was in Singapore. When I was in Singapore for the summit for North Korea, he uh, called me right after he made the joint statement. Do you not think that this whole, uh, this article and what's going on in the White House now, what's going on in the administration, will make Trump more unstable, more uh, apt to lash out? I reject your adjective. He's not unstable. He's perhaps the most successful president in modern history. You don't, I know you're, you know, ITN, Channel 4 are rank left-wing journalists, but look at the last 18 months. Just look at the facts. Lowest unemployment for a generation, lowest unemployment for Hispanics and black Americans since record-keeping began. We've doubled the GDP growth from the, the Obama years. We've had hundreds, hundreds of billions of dollars uh, repatriated to the country thanks to tax reform. We've revitalized NATO. We've crushed ISIS in the form of its physical caliphate. And, so and the, all those you know, successes you, that you, you mentioned, all those using successes. Using these adjectives, using these all descriptors those, is just another example those, of fake okay, news. And all those successes that you list are despite, not because of the president, according to this anonymous author in the New York Times. And just to clarify, <laughs> we are not rank left wing just, journalists. Oh, come we on. are is this impartial journalists, is this, is this regulated by wise? Ofcom. Regulated by Ofcom, is which this, is our broadcasting is watchdog. This Morecambe if we were ranked wise, left wing journalists, we would lose our license. Give me a, give me a break. This is like the Morecambe and Wise Christmas special. It wasn't because of the president. The fact that he slashed 
22 times, for every executive order he signed, he's rescinded 22, unleashing the American economy. The fact that now Mexico and Canada are begging to renegotiate NATO. You're going to put that on the doorstep of Obama okay. or, or what? I'm not Tony sure whether... Blair? I'm not I mean, sure. it's just ridiculous. Sebastian Gorka, I'm not sure whether you're more or wise, but thank you very much for joining us. Now, it's a Washington whodunit. The search for the author of a damning expose on the life on uh, life in the uh, Trump White House. America's vice president was one of those who had to deny earlier that he uh, had written the anonymous article for the New York Times. Sky's senior correspondent Ian Woods reports now from Washington. Inside and outside this building, a game of White House Cluedo is underway. Amateur sleuths and Trump loyalists are piecing together the clues to work out who stabbed the president in the back. The author of the New York Times article, granted anonymity by the newspaper, is described as an administration official. So the chief suspects have been quick to deny being Colonel Mustard in the Situation Room with a poisoned pen. And if that piece is true, if it's accurate, if it's actually, I think they described it as a senior administration official, uh, they, they should not well have chosen to take a disgruntled, deceptive, bad actor's word for anything and put it in their newspaper and and I, i'll answer your other question directly because i know someone will say gosh you didn't answer the question it's not mine the election president is trump is furious the news so broke the as he was in a meeting Times with sheriffs who were pledged to uphold the law and arrest culprits meaning gutless a gutless editorial uh, uh, we're doing a great job but the mystery is irresistible to late-night comedians, particularly the author's use of an unusual word. That's not a common word, Lodestar. Not a lot of people use that word, but you know who does use that word? This guy. It really was the Lodestar. And that's going to continue to be a Lodestar. Jack's Lodestar as our Lodestar. You are a Lodestar. Lodestar. That's right. The vice president has issued a denial. Well, I think it's a disgrace. Uh, the anonymous editorial published in the New York Times represents a new low in American journalism. And I think the New York Times should be ashamed. And I think whoever wrote this anonymous editorial should also be ashamed as well. So too did Dan Coates, the director of national intelligence, who considers President Putin more of a threat than his boss. That Vladimir Putin is coming to the White House in the fall. Say or that again. <laughs> <laughs> But it's no laughing matter for the president and comes right after similar tales of officials fighting hard to restrain Mr. Trump's wilder suggestions in a new book by veteran reporter Bob Woodward. Mr. Trump seems to acknowledge there is internal resistance. I'm draining the swamp and the swamp is trying to fight back. Don't worry, we will win, he told followers. Even the first lady issued a rare statement condemning what she called cowardly actions. For her to say that it's sabotaging the White House it seems to be this new level of this loneliness for the president, this sense of betrayal, and why it affects him so much is that... The big news in Washington this week was supposed to be the confirmation hearings of Trump's choice to fill a vacancy on the Supreme Court. But once again, it's the unorthodox presidency of Donald Trump which overtakes all other issues. Ian Woods at Sky News, Washington.